Before we get started, I just want to quickly talk about Civivi's holiday sale. From November 19th until December 17th, 2021, you can save up to 25% off on Civivi knives um, for their holiday sale, which is an incredible deal. But you can always save up to 5% off if you use my discount code on their website. I have a link down below going right to their website, and you can save yourself 5% off by using my discount code. Let's get to this video. Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and here we have Civivi's new multi-tool and blade combination. And we have a lot to get into with this video. We're going to talk about the heat treat, sharpening, all the good stuff. But first, let's talk about the action and materials. So the materials, we have a 9CR multi-tool and a Nitro V blade. Very, very cool. Good materials here. Stainless steel liners, and it is a stainless steel liner lock. And the deployment is incredibly easy on this thing, even though it is a front flipper only. It's a front flipper on both sides. So if you're using the multi-tool or the blade, you do have to front flip it. However, you can do the reach around where you just reach around to the front and pull it. That does work very easily because they use the right jimping. This is the type of jimping I like to see on a front flipper. It's really grippy and it wraps all the way around the front flipper on both sides. And then if you're going to switch hands, so if you deploy this one and you want to get to the other one, all you have to do is when you're spinning it like this, spin it and flip. And then you're to the other side. So you just spin and flip at the same time. And I've gotten really good at doing that because once you realize that that's all you have to do is just spin and flip and you're right there to the other side, you automatically know exactly what tool you have and which one to flip. It, you know, I thought for a second that I would always mistaken which one, but I, I, I know because the, the clip is on the blade side. So that's one way to, you know, to kind of signal that I'm on the blade side, but you do realize it really fast and it, it winds up becoming second nature to you once you own it. And I've been carrying it quite a bit. So that says a lot. It's actually a very functional tool and I have enjoyed using it. Now deployment, you can do all the other after I fail it, <laughs> the little tricks, you know, where you do the reach around and the, you know, like I said, you can flip it like that. You can do the regular front flip. I handed this to somebody at work that just recently started doing front flippers and they got it down pretty quickly. So it is a very easy deployed front flipper. Now the multi-tool, I'm not going to say it's easier to front flip that side because the blade is a little snappier, but you can definitely feel the weight difference because the multi-tool is a little bit heavier than the blade. So you can definitely feel the difference between the blade and the multi-tool when you flip it open. They are very smooth on ceramic caged bearings. So that is another thing. It's, it's incredibly smooth. And the lock bar access, not the best but it's not bad either i have not had one issue with it and considering what this is i have no complaints on it it, it is easy to access i haven't had any issues closing it or anything like that and the thickness the thickness of the handle or the whole tool, I guess you could say, it's very comfortable in the hand. It winds up working out really good. And then when you mix that with this amazing geometry, this thing is very thin. The blade, the Nitro V blade, stonewashed Nitro V blade, but very thin. I measured mine about 10 to 13 thousandths behind the edge. Then you mix that with these really good ergos because you can like, because it's a, um, a double tool handle since there's two tools in it it's extra wide so you have like little places to put your finger and kind of grip it around the blade and it winds up working out pretty good and it is very solid i mean i can flex it only because it's so thin but it's not trying to be a hard use knife or anything like that. It's just, you know, a nice, easy multi-tool, you know, blade and tool that you can use, you know, um, when you need it. And it works really, really well. The cutting performance is very nice on this blade. It slices through things very, very nicely. The geometry is just amazing. Geometry cuts. We all know that. And this thing cuts like a beast. It cuts really, really good. And because the handle is so thick, you have a lot of leverage into the cut. So 
um you know considering the blade shape too the blade shape is a very useful blade shape it's a blade shape that is kind of universally known as like a jack of all trades type of blade shape it is a drop point blade so it's going to be good for just about everything including utility cuts the utility cuts are really really good and with this needle tip point you're not going to want to to i mean you already have a pry bar on this side so you don't need to do any prying with it but it's definitely needle like so it's going to be a fragile tip but because it's like that it is very nice for like picking out splinters or cutting things open or any type of utility cuts it is very thin and it slices very good so the cutting performance on this thing is really good all the way across the board now getting into the multi-tool the multi-tool, we have a bottle opener, which works really well. Uh, I've opened many bottles with it. The, the bottle opener works really well. And then we have a little bit holder. We'll get into that in a second. Then we have like a belt cutter, rope cutter. You know, this thing can be used for a bunch of different type of types of things. I was cutting straps with it at work, and it is a double-sided one where the... The angle of the grind is not only on one side, it is on both sides. And then you have like a little pry bar on the far end, maybe kind of like a flathead, but it doesn't really get down to a fine enough point to be a flathead, but I used it for prying. That's what I used it for. And not heavy duty prying is not going to be good for that, but it will be good for just little light duty tasks. Uh, so, and it works good. It, I did not have an issue with it. Now... The the ruler on it, we have centimeters and inches. So inches on one side, it gives you three inches. So you can do like a quick measurement of whatever, you know, it, it does come in handy, especially if you do things in construction or any type of work where you sometimes need to measure. So really, really handy there. Now, the bit holder, we do have a little bit holder where you can put bits inside there and use it as a a driver, I guess you could say. Now, I do have a couple complaints on that, and we'll talk about that here in a second, but it does still work. Now, the clip and carry. The clip and carry, it's a wire clip. Wire clips work so, so good. And I did wind up keeping it the way it's faced just because when I pull it out of my pocket, I'm already to the blade. So it wound up being a good indicator of the bladed side. And yeah, I have you know no complaints on the way the clip works. It works great in and out of the pocket. And I carried it a lot in my um, EDC organizer. So it does fit in one of those. It's not perfectly fit. It is a little tiny bit tall for one, but it still works just fine. But in the pocket, um, nice and slim, nice and compact. And yeah, I had no issues carrying it. The clip works incredibly well, but you can flip it to the other side if you would like. Now, let's talk about maintenance on this thing, sharpening, heat treat, and all those good things. And also, then we'll get into the negative things. So, sharpening. It's Nitro-V steel. I like Nitro-V steel. It's a good stainless steel, and it sharpens up very, very easily. And this blade, being as thin as it is, it sharpens up very fast. It, I mean, it took hardly any time. To sharpen this thing up and being the type of tool it is you know i wasn't looking to get no pretty edge on it i wasn't trying to put a mirror polished edge or anything like that i just went to 600 grit it went very fast it was easy to hold an angle the heat treat felt great on the stone and i did get pretty good edge retention out of the factory edge but it you know I, I did want to put my own edge on it and, you know, get back that, that nice bite to my to the edge. But I, like I said, I wasn't looking for anything pretty or anything like that. So I just tuned it up really good on the stone, put a 600 grit reprofiled edge on it. And then I stropped it. I stropped it on, what, uh, 3 micron, then 0.5 micron. I really didn't need to do the 0.5 micron. But everything went well. It deburred really easily. Um, maybe the, the deburring didn't go as easily as, you know, I would have liked, but it wasn't hard or wasn't bad or anything like that. And it was probably just me because it did sharpen up incredibly well and did take a very, very sharp edge. Now, 
oiling it and uh, maintaining it, even though it is still a stainless steel, I think it's important to still keep your tools oiled. So, you know, spray them down with some alcohol, wipe them off, clean them off, and then put some oil on there. I like to use my three-in-one oil, cleans, penetrates, and prevents rust. And I just put a couple drips on basically a paper towel or on the blade itself and wipe it down, leave it, let it sit for about five minutes, then dry it off. And I did that across the board, even with the 9CR multi-tool, because even though the multi-tool is 9CR stainless, it's still, you know, you still want to take care of it. Now, they did have, a, they do have a nice stone washing on the multi-tool, so you're not going to have to really worry about rust, but you should still take care of it just to be sure. Now, the little blade right here, even though mine is not dull or anything like that, so I'm not going to show you how to, like, really sharpen it, but I am still going to tell you how you can sharpen it and how to maintain it. Now, if you want to strop it just to keep it maintained, you know, during the week if you are using it, I recommend just using it when you absolutely have to. That way you can keep it sharp for as long as possible. But what you can do is you can take a strop and you can fold it in half. Um, and then basically just strop backwards because when it's folded, it's basically like a, a U, like a little groove. And you can just wedge it right in here to this groove and you can just strop it backwards. And go do both sides really good. And you can keep this thing relatively sharp. Just like that, with, you know, just a little bit of compound and some leather. Now, if you do have to do a full-blown sharpening, you can use a diamond rod or just take a piece of sandpaper and fold it up just like the strop and do it just like that. You can even maybe fold it over a strop or fold it over something round. You can basically just fold it into a U and do the exact same thing. And Or you can just you know hold it down and shove the sandpaper in there. You can use a Dremel if you really wanted to. I recommend just doing it by hand with a little bit of sandpaper you know, and stropping it backwards until you create a burr on one side. Flip it over, do the other side, and then take the strop and strop the inside of it. It's actually, people look at it as being very difficult to maintain, but it's really not. It's pretty easy to maintain. So, let's talk about some negatives really quick. So, some negatives. Um, you know, I do want to say before we get into some negatives, this is a really handy tool. And I understand what they were going for with this, and it does work out pretty good. However, this bit holder, it doesn't hold standard bits. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't know why they wouldn't make it hold just regular standard bits. Because I honestly thought it was going to. And that would have been awesome just to hold a regular standard size bit. You know, these are all just regular regular standard bits that you would use in any regular driver. But it does not go in this. This is too big. This is too small on this side. And I've tried really hard to fit it in there. It does not fit. Obviously, it doesn't fit in there. The smaller size does fit. Here, you're going to see this little pry bar come in handy really quick. Because these things I always got to pry out. But this little tool does come in handy. I'll tell you that. But it does hold these little tiny ones on this end right here. So you can use this side with these little ones, but with these, it's not going to be the standard size. So you do have to get, if unless if you already have them, you know, the size that it fits. But most of the bits that I know of are these two sizes. I guess I'm happy it at least holds these, but I would have really preferred it to hold standard bits. Next thing. The, the micarta, not the best quality. I do kind of wish they would have... I noticed they did upgrade their micarta a little bit on some of their other models. And it's not horrible micarta. And you can oil it up and make it a little darker. It will dry off pretty quickly, so you might want to do a couple different coats. And just handling it over time, it will darken really nicely. And that's the, the way I like to do it is just carry it and use it. And over time, it will get dark. And it is easy to clean with soap and water or just alcohol, really. Just use some alcohol and wipe it down. You can keep it clean. But I would like to see a little bit better quality micarta. It's just, you know... You can really see the fibers, which is good. I like that, but they kind of blend together. 
you know, which kind of tells me it's more of a, a cheaper quality micarta. But so, you know, it's not that big of a deal because these aren't, these are very affordable. So I, but I, you know, I, I always looked at Civivi as being the, the company that kind of brings you the best bang for the buck type thing, you know, so I'd like to see them improve that. I do like that they do have T8 hardware, which is really nice. So that is a really good thing to me that they are using T8 hardware. However, you know, it is flimsy. It's not going to be the strongest tool in the world, but it's not trying to be. But it, I have no doubt that, you know, I couldn't, you know, if I really wanted to, I could break this thing. Not a big deal, though, because it is trying to be lightweight. It's not trying to be hard use or anything like that. And this little tiny pry bar and bottle opener and everything, it's perfectly fine for what it's built for. And now, the last thing that I could really complain about, where they put the stop pins. I don't like this type of stop pin area because, look... You see the blade, it winds up hitting right under here. Now, I am happy that they hit the thickest point, which I'm very happy about that. So that, that's not that big of a deal. I just prefer the stop pin to be like an internal stop pin up here or just place somewhere else. Because like, let's say I chip my blade, you know, because this is a tool. So, or if I sharpen it to death and I need to put a new choil in it or something like that, it's, it's going to make it to where it it makes it a little bit more difficult for me to put my own choil in, in in the future. Now, that would be a very long time, and I would absolutely get every penny out of it before it got to that point. But I just it's just preference. It's just preference. It's not even a big deal. It would not stop me from buying this. And the multi-tool really doesn't matter where it hits. It hits in just a fine spot. I'm mostly just talking about where the blade hits. I prefer the internal stop pins over the ones that wind up landing right under the blade. It's became a problem with me and with other knives in the past. Um, where I've had to cut in choils and I couldn't do it. So with this one, I don't see it ever becoming an issue, but sometimes you just don't know. You never know. But all in all, I can definitely recommend it. I like it. I carry it. I think it's awesome. I think it's a great present for somebody or yourself. Um, I like that it is all compact, all into one. You have a lot of options, just all into one. And they didn't sacrifice the blade to fit the tool. And it's a good quality blade with a good quality tool. Good materials. You know, they... They did a great job on this, and I think uh, I think a lot of people could find this very handy and very useful. So there you guys go. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.